Hi, everyone. I'm pleased to be here on behalf of the IFCC organization to introduce this new and interesting webinar on new infection fighters. This webinar has been organized by IFCC corporate member, Min Ray, and will be focused on uh, emerging uh, markers of sepsis, including uh, soluble CD14 uh, subtype, as well as IL-6. I'm Khosrow Adeli. I'm the president of IFCC and head of clinical biochemistry at the University of Toronto, the Hospital for Sick Children, and a professor at the university. As you know, both viral and bacterial infection lead to a significant inflammatory response. This inflammatory response are, involves transcription of a number of genes and a development of a RNA signature. This RNA signature uh, leads to production of a number of proteins. So there are a number of proteins induced by viral infection and a number of proteins produced by bacterial infection. Now, uh, there are some common elements between these two infections, but there are also certain proteins that appear to be more specific to viral infection. So today we will be talking, uh, we'll be hearing uh, presentations on a number of uh, these uh, markers, particularly uh, CD14 uh, soluble form, uh, uh, referred to also as presepsin. And uh, IL-6, which is a member of interleukin family, uh, and other uh, markers similar to that, like IL-8, IL-10, and others. Now, the soluble CD14 uh, subtype um, is of particular interest, and uh, it actually has two mem uh, forms, a membrane form and a soluble form. And it uh, binds uh, to um, uh, LPS, which is a, uh, can uh, be generated by bacteria. And these, uh, this leads to a formation of a complex. This complex in turn leads to or triggers degradation of soluble CD14 uh, by pr various proteases. Um, and this leads to production of a smaller peptide uh, called the subtype. So soluble CD14 subtype. This, it can be measured uh, uh, as, as a potential marker of sepsis uh, caused by a bacterial infection. Now, other than uh, soluble CD14 subtype, there are a number of other uh, markers that have been identified. So you'll hear about some of these today uh, in our uh, presentations. Our first presentation will be by Professor Mario Plebani on clinical application and outlook of soluble CD14 subtype and PCT, procalcitonin. Professor Plebani is known to many of you, uh, he's full professor of clinical biochemistry and clinical molecular biology at the University of Padova and adjunct professor at the University of Texas. Uh, he's currently the president elect of European Federation of Laboratory Medicine, EFLM, as, as well as the uh, editor in chief of CCLM Clinical Chemistry and Laboratory Medicine. Professor Plebani, please go ahead. Good afternoon and good morning, dear colleagues. Let me thank the organizer, particularly Mindery Diagnostic, for offering me the opportunity to deliver this talk on clinical application and outlook of the soluble CD14, better known as presepsin, procalcitonin, and even interleukin-6. I'm Mario Plebani, full professor of clinical biochemistry and clinical molecular biology at the University of Padova in Italy. This is a part of my university. On the left side, the first and oldest anatomic theater in the world. On the right side, the magnificent Aula Magna dedicated to Galileo Galilei, who was teaching in my university for more than 10 years. 
I will focus my talk on the clinical utilization of such biomarkers for sepsis diagnosis, as this is a very interesting and hot topic. And as you can see in the first line, in this paper published very recently on diagnostic excellence for sepsis diagnosis, you can see that advanced analytical method, particularly machine learning algorithms, artificial intelligence, combined with the, such biomarkers should be used to produce an actionable information to allow an earlier and more accurate diagnosis and treatment. The question about sepsis is that is still the, one of the major cause of mortality and morbidity. And if the infection is not promptly, promptly managed, the disease rapidly evolves causing septic shock and even multiple organ failure with a high fatality rate. So many biomarkers have been developed and evaluated to provide information for this early and accurate diagnosis. But no available biomarker, biomarker should be used as a standalone criterion for the diagnosis. In fact, in the paper we published some years ago, we defined an unfinished journey the research for biomarkers for sepsis diagnosis and management. And in fact, in this slide, you can see that more than 170 biomarkers have been described. You can see even the perception, the CRP, the interleukin-6. And the question is that uh, sepsis is a very complex pathophysiological uh, disease involving many mediators of inflammation and other mechanisms, including uh, apoptosis and uh, other types uh, of uh, coagulation biomarkers. So, in addition, the systemic nature of sepsis and the large numbers of cell types, tissues, and organs involved expand the number of potentially useful biomarker candidates. And this is to better understand the heterogeneity of the disease due to both pathogen factors environmental factors, host factors, including the host microbiome. Starting from the beginning, we can deal with the procalcitonin assay. As you can see in this slide, over time, many papers have been reported the use of uh, Procalcitonin in several uh, diseases, in, first of all, bacteremia, endocarditis, sepsis, of course, and many not only observational studies, but also intervention studies. And we know exactly the nature of procalcitonin, we know the alt life that explain why this uh, early kinetics is useful for many disease diagnoses. But in particular, I like to deal with the famous paper, the Prorata trial, a multi-center randomized controlled trial, in which the use of procalcitonin to reduce patient exposure to antibiotics have been evaluated, demonstrating no difference between the control group and the group of patients who take antibiotics only after the measurement of procalcitonin. As you can see, no differences. And 
taking into account the importance to avoid antibiotic supplementation to, uh, for the patient, this was a very interesting paper. Thereafter, many other papers have been published on the clinical outcomes associated with the procalcitonin algorithms to guide antibiotic therapy, particularly, but not only in respiratory tract infections. And as a matter of fact, you can see that uh, the usefulness of procalcitonin for antibiotic stewardship has been demonstrated in many, many papers. The question about uh, procalcitonin to guide uh, the therapy is that one cutoff uh, or better, the cutoff should be better defined to assure sensitivity and specificity and uh, changing the cutoff has been found to change the sensitivity at the cost of specificity and vice versa. And this has been published in this paper by Christina Walker and Peter Schlattmann. As you can see, the take-home message is don't use only one cutoff, but cutoff intervals together with clinical assessment. And in particular, you should, we should use the Fagan nomogram, taking into account the pretest probability and moving after the measurement of procalcitonin to have a higher post-test probability or to confirm the disease or to, to exclude the disease. Therefore, one size for cutoff does not fit all. We have to define that uh, to, for ruling high specificity and high positive predictive value is preferred. Conversely, high sensitivity and uh, higher negative predictive value is needed for the rule out of the disease. And some adoption of different cutoffs should be probably the better defined for children. So this is what happens changing the cutoff value. And you can see on the right side, the negative predictive value ranging from 100% with a very low cutoff to 89% using higher cutoff 6.2. Therefore, with some friends, we published this paper on to guide antibiotic stewardship. This is a consensus document in which we define three different scenarios. The first one is a patient with a severe illness admitted to intensive care units and you can see that the cutoff is 0 0.5 and uh, thereafter the algorithm is moving on based on the results and eventually the use of procalcitonin measurement every 24 or 48 hours is recommended. The second scenario is a patient with a moderate illness outside intensive care unit. And as you can see, the cutoff adopted is lower, 0 0.25. And once again, the monitoring every 24 or 48 hours is recommended. And as you can see that the algorithm is changing if bacterial infection is uncertain or highly suspected. Anyway, the third scenario in patients with my illness outside ICU is still use the 0 0.25 cutoff and still the monitoring based on uh, procalcitonin 
at uh, after 24, 48 hours is strongly encouraged. Why we should use uh, monitoring serial measurement of calcitonin? Because it's being established that the sensitivity and specificity of uh, a decrease of increase over 72 or 48 hours uh, is uh, linked to a very high sensitivity and specificity, as you can see in this slide. And particularly, a decrease higher than 80% of procalcitonin after 72 hours provide a negative predictive value very high, 94%. This is an info important information for the right use of procalcitonin in clinical practice. The other point to take into account is that not all procalcitonin assays metals are created equal. In this case, you can see that the relationship between two metals uh, make possible frequency of discrep discrepant samples very high. So we started and we published this paper in which harmonization for procalcitonin measurement have been done, have been promoted using commutable human serum, as you can see the different types of serum, and particularly using the uh, frozen commutable uh, human sample materials, we provide a better comparability between different commercially available methods. So this is a way to promote harmonization for procalcitonin measurement. The second point, in addition to, to accuracy, is that the procalcitonin should allow a rapid, the method should allow a rapid turnaround time because for procalcitonin, rapid notification of the result is mandatory. And therefore, uh, we started to use uh, in real time the, and communicate the data to the physician. But the combination between procalcitonin and other biomarkers seems now to be recommended. This is a, an interesting paper in which the combination not only between procalcitonin and CRP protein, but with perception uh, improve the accuracy of the diagnosis. And particularly perception seems to be a further additional valuable biomarker. We perfectly know the synthesis and mechanism of synthesis and release of sol soluble CD14, better known as perception. As you can see, the perception activation and releasing processing in this line is highlighted. And you can see that there are some differences in the mechanism of a release from interleukin 6 procalcitonin, eventually C-reactive protein, and vice versa, the direct synthesis and the release of perception of soluble CD. 14 by the, that is an innate immune response market, particularly in sepsis. So this paper in which a dynamic monitoring of perception and procalcitonin demonstrated that both markers uh, are, are valuable to evaluate the therapeutic efficacy and prognosis of patients with severe sepsis. And in particular, you can see that perception is very valuable, much better than 
uh, other biomarkers, including procalcitonin, to identify the difference between survival and non-survival patients. And in particular, this is uh, still uh, reported in this slide in, you, in which you can see that the perception and the ratio of perception to creatinine is valuable to make a prognostic judgment. Uh, this is another interesting paper, is a review, demonstrating that the perception show valuable diagnostic accuracy when compared with the standard of care. And another advantage is as a small volume of serum plasma to be used. In this, uh, in this uh, paper, the authors reported the predictive positive and negative predictive value of procalcitonin in neonatal sepsis for perception. And you can see on the right side that uh, the value is very, very good and very, very interesting. So sensitivity, specificity, and predictive positive value for an early diagnosis for predicting and avoiding possibly death of the patient and the survivor have been reported by many authors. Another interesting systemic review and meta-analysis published this year demonstrated that uh, perception is an accurate biomarker for early diagnosis of neonat neonatal sepsis. As you can see, the primary analysis of quality assessment demonstrated that the accuracy in terms of sensitivity and specificity is very high in most studies already published. And this is not only for early and late onset sepsis, but for both term and preterm infants, suggesting the large adoption of these biomarkers in clinical practice. In addition, perception is valuable in predicting mortality in patients with COVID-19 pneumonia. This is one of the papers recently published with very high negative predictive value, 0 0.93, much better than other uh, biomarkers. And this is another recently published paper in which the diagnostic and prognostic utility of soluble CD14 subtype, the perception has been demonstrated. And as you can see in this slide, you can compare the kinetics and the values of perception procalcitonin interleukin-6. The advantage of interleukin-6 is that it's possible to better differentiate survivors from non-survivors. So the prognostic value of perception is much higher than for the other two biomarkers. And this is another figure demonstrating the important prognostic value of perception. Other papers have been reported the, uh, the importance of, the, of both biomarkers in adults. And in addition, this is uh, the usefulness of perception for early detection of infection complication after colorectal surgery. That is much better, you can see that is much better than the use of C-reactive protein and even procalcitonin. CRP and procalcitonin, in fact, increase immediately after the surgery, but the increase of perception did happen when the infectious complications occur. 
So it's, it's possible to make a better differential diagnosis and identification of the severity of the disease and complication. And this once again means that perception make possible a prognostication value. This is another interesting review on the role of perception in the diagnosis of sepsis in critically ill infant. In this paper, you can see that the perception lower than 200 is should this value is valuable to exclude sepsis. Values lower than 300 is very improbable a systemic infection. Otherwise, perception of 1,000 picogram per ml or higher than this value is related to a high risk of severe sepsis and septic shock. So, taking into account recently published uh, systemic uh, reviews and meta-analysis, we can say that uh, Perception provides higher sensitivity and specificity than procalcitonin and C-reactive protein for neonatal or oh, perinatal sepsis is a better predictor of outcome, is a reliable indicator of treatment efficacy. This is a paper we published on the value of perceptions in risk stratification of COVID-19. And you can see that is really impressive the difference of perception value according to the longer hospital stay, and in particular a cutoff of 250 nanogram per, per, per liter make possible to differentiate the severity of the disease. What about interleukin-6? We know perfectly how interleukin-6 is released and the action of interleukin-6, particularly on liver, increasing the synthesis of C-reactive protein as, as well as other reactive proteins, acute reactive proteins. We know the role on blood vessel and on monocytes. So recently, alteration of cytokine, particularly interleukin-6, has been reported to predict the outcome of sepsis. This paper is a meta-analysis demonstrated that reducing interleukin-6 may be a reduction of interleukin-6 is an indicator of better prognosis and survival in patients with sepsis. So, finally, MindRay developed the, uh, new assays for soluble CD14 perception with the same uh, method used for interleukin-6 and procalcitonin using coated beds. And then you can see the performance specification are very important because for all three proteins, the turnaround time is, turnaround time is lower than 20 minutes. So allowing a prompt notification of the results to the clinician improving the diagnosis and the treatment of the patient. And I like to stress the point that the reference interval is being evaluated and the linearity is very high. But my friend Massimiliano Cosi will deal with this uh, analytical performance specification of mind reagents later on. Just uh, this slide to make possible a short a, gl a, a glance a value for accuracy and analytical specificity of the mind ray 
perception method. So I believe that uh, we can move to the final part of my talk that is uh, today, uh, the use not only of one biomarker, but the combination of biomarkers is highly suggested. And particularly, procalcitonin and perception should be used, should be combined, used, and eventually the addition of interleukin-6 should be recommended in some cases. So two, beta, two biomarkers for sepsis and for other patient management of infectious disease, two markers is better than one. And in particular, we have to put together acute phase indicator procalcitonin interview to six with neutrophil monocyte activation markers and disease perceptions in particular. And some data are already reported, demonstrated that uh, adding uh, perception to the traditional procalcitonin measurement increase the area under the queue. That means the accuracy of the measurement, allowing the better detection and diagnosis of patients. And in particular, you can see that there is an increase in the specificity and sensitivity putting together the two biomarkers. And this is a tentative algorithm already reported in the literature in the case of suspected sepsis, increase in procalcitonin in the perception may identify a bacterial sepsis. Otherwise, if there is a normal procalcitonin, normal perception, probably this means no sepsis. But if procalcitonin is high and perception very high, the suspicion is to have a fungal sepsis disease. And this is another tentative algorithm putting together the clinical uh, the clinical score, the so-called SOFA, with the measurement of perception and procalcitonin, and for to exclude or to confirm the diagnosis of sepsis. So some take-home message. First of all, first of all, uh, a single biomarker should it seems to be not recommended. Procalcitonin is a well-established guideline recommended biomarker, particularly for systemic bacterial infection and may guide antibiotic treatment. Procalcitonin assay requires both high analytical sensitivity, rapid turnaround time, further efforts have been started and in progress to improve the harmonization of procalcitonin procalcitoni essays and comparability of results, and appropriate cutoffs should be used for the right interpretation of procalcitonin measurement. Perception allows a nearly diagnostic differentiation between sepsis and for the prediction of mortality, and particularly in perinatal sepsis, perception was found to provide very high sensitivity and specificity, higher than procalcitonin and eventually C-reactive protein, and a very high accurate prognostic value. So perception and procalcitonin combined measurement on one platform is a fast and easy to perform, clinical justified for an effective and safe diagnostic in combination with clinical score. Interleukin-6 measurement should be added, particularly to better understand the differential diagnosis in difficult patient and difficult clinical situation. So thank you so much for your attention. You can have, have a nice day. Thanks again to the MindRay Diagnostic for offering me the possibility to give you this talk. Our next presentation is by Professor Zhao Fei, Unsoluble CD14 subtype and interleukin 6 key inflammatory biomarkers. Dr. Fei is a professor of laboratory medicine at Beijing Hospital, uh, as well as director of clinical biobank at National Center of General Ecology, director of laboratory 
of Cell Biology, Beijing Hospital, professor of uh, University uh, of Chinese Academy of Sciences, and a member of Beijing Medical Association of Laboratory Medicine. Professor Fei, please go ahead. Dear colleagues, friends, I'm both honored and pleased to have this opportunity provided by Mandarin to introduce two key inflammatory biomarkers, the soluble subtype of CD14 and interleukin-6. We, we all know that innate and adaptive immune cells activation and infiltration is the key characteristic of tissue inflammation. The innate immune system is the front line of host defense in which innate immune cells are activated by danger signals, including pathogen and danger-associated molecular pattern and the metabolite associated danger signals. Innate uh, immunity activation can directly contribute built to tissue inflammation or immune re resolution by phagocytosis and uh, secretion of biological active molecules or indirectly via antigen presenting cells activation mediated adaptive immune response. There are three common receptors for recognition and signaling, the TOR-like receptors, NOD-like receptors, and RRGI-like receptors. CD14 is a member of TOR-like receptor that has the ability to identify several groups of ligands of both gram-positive and gram-negative pathogen, such as the lipid, peptidoglycans and other surface uh, patterns. Therefore, it's necessary to investigate the soluble subtype of SCD14 as a biomarker of inflammatory disease. First, let's look at uh, CD14. CD14 exists uh, in two forms, membrane CD14 and uh, soluble CD14. The soluble CD14 subtype of precepsin is produced by circulating plasma protease action on SCD14. So SCD14 ST is a glycoprotein fragment derived from monocytes and macrophage. It's an innate direct response biomarker of activation of immune cells responding towards invading pathogens. The molecular complex of CD14 LPS, LBP, is internalized into a phagolysism. CD14 LPS, LBP complex exposed to an enzymatic processing that needs a protease named Cercepsin D. CD14 proteolysis and the internalization process release a small soluble peptide fragment. The product of CD14 cleavage has been named soluble CD14 subtype or pre precepsin that is released in the general circulation by proteolysis and exocytosis. Compared to the PCT, induced by cytokines after bacteria phagocytosis. A CD14 ST is a more direct infectious biomarker, which is mediated by pathogens directly. Many studies on pathological mechanism and the clinical trials have revealed that a CD14 ST is important for the clinical management of infectious disease or related conditions, such as neonatal sepsis, parasitic joint infections, and the febrile neutropenia, sepsis, and early infection in trauma. In the study of uh, adult sepsis, SCD14 ST should as a good candidate and a predictive marker. The level of uh, mandatory SCD14 ST 
is significantly increased in patients with sepsis and septic shock compared with those in bacteria infection and the health group. IOC analysis of SCD14 ST indicated good diagnostic accuracy and efficacy between ICU patients with or without sepsis. In another study, SCD14 ST levels present significantly different in several uh, year and critically ill group, while PCT and I interleukin 6 level displayed no statistically significant difference between these two groups. Therefore, SCD14 ST could serve as a sensitive biomarker for the assessment of sepsis uh, severity and uh, in the in uh, ICU patients comparing with PCT and the interleukin-6. During the treatment of sepsis, SCD14 ST is a powerful monitoring biomarkers in both the sequential organ failure assessment and approach to favorable group. SCD14 levels on day three and day seven, we can see, were significantly lower than the time of uh, admission. Meanwhile, in the unfavorable group, SCD14 ST levels keep the, at the same level and the time of admission. For neonatal sepsis, SCD14 ST shows its high value in the rapid assessment and evaluation of severity. SCD14 ST levels in neonatals with sepsis are significantly higher than those of non-infective and normal control groups, suggesting that it is an effective indicator for the identification of infective and non-infective systemic inflammatory response syndrome. Here we can see SCD14 levels at T0 were significantly higher in neonatals with sepsis and sepsis shock compared to those with infection only. During the first 48 hours from the onset of symptoms, SCD14 ST progressively increased in neonatals with septic shock while it remained, remained stable or decreased in neonatal with sepsis or infection. So comparing with PCT, CRP, and WBC, SCD14 ST showed even superior diagnostic power for neonatal sepsis, playing an important role in the rapid assessment and the evaluation of severity. SCD14 levels in neonatal with sepsis are significantly higher than those of non-infective and normal control groups suggesting higher value for identification of infective and non-infective SRS. Some studies have shown that SCD14 ST levels were significantly higher in PGI patients than controls post-operative levels of SCD14 ST in PGI patients dropped significantly during the recovery time, while SCD14 ST levels remained unchanged or lower in non-infected patients. Therefore, SCD14 displayed it could be as uh, serve as the potential inflammation biomarkers for the diagnosis and the prognosis of prosthetic joint infection. Here, SCD, SCD14 ST is an early diagnostic marker for febrile neutropenia in hematologic malignancy patients. In a related case study, elevated levels of SCD14 ST were observed one day earlier than CRP 
plasma SCD14 ST level is a reliable marker of a febrile neutron PDR. Even in case of extremely low WBC counts. Furthermore, evaluation of increased rate can facilitate the early diagnosis of febrile neutropenia, even in the case of in patients with myeloid and lymphoid disorders. Closer monitoring of this molecule could prevent infection associated deaths in hemological malignant malignancy cases. Comparing with non-bacteria infectious disease and the uh, health group, the concentration levels of mandarin SCD14 in bacteria infection disease group are significantly higher and are showing as a accurate biomarker for bacteria infections, which is a very, very exciting for us. SCD14 ST uh, is a superior biomarker for early differentiation of infection in trauma, trauma patients. Plasma SCD14 ST levels within the first three days of administration were only significantly increased in the infected trauma group, but not in the non-infected trauma and the sterile group. SCD14 ST is also specified in the presence of infection in trauma patients. Infections are common in people of all ages of all over the world. However, SCD14 ST displayed as a powerful biomarkers in the evaluation of infection and sepsis, monitoring the patients responding to the treatment and the earlier differentiation of trauma infection and so on. Therefore, we believe that the SCD14 will have great clinical application values in infectious disease in future. Now in the next part, we will take a look at interleukin-6. Interleukin-6 is a prototypical cytokine for maintaining hemostasis homeostasis. When homeostasis uh, is disrupted by infectious or tissue injuries, interleukin-6 is produced immediately and contributes to the host defense against such emergent uh, stress through activation of acu acute phase and immune responses. Following passaging and death associated molecular pattern recognition, pro inflammatory and antimicrobial responses were triggered by inducing the release of a broad range of cytokines. The pro inflammatory cytokines, including TNF alpha, are interleukin 1 beta and interleukin 6, are rapidly released upon the activation involved, involved in acute inflammatory reactions. Interleukin-6 levels varies across various disease and tissues and disease. Different uh, beneficial effects have been reported in metabolism for many tissues, including liver, adipose uh, tissue and the central nervous system and the pancreas. By contrast, interleukin-6 appear to be detrimental uh, during cancer development because it promotes tumor genesis in tissues such as the liver and the colon. Thus, the therapeutic effect of interleukin-6 may represent a double-edged sword, depending on the specific malignancy. Tocilizumab is a recombinant humanized anti-interleukin-6 receptor monoantibody 
monoclonal antibody, which has a main use of treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, systemic or polyarticular during uh, idiopathic arthritis. Interleukin 6 concentration distribution, distribution displayed statistics significantly difference between sepsis and septic shock, much, much higher in septic shock group we can see here. The median concentration of interleukin 6 in normal infant is 5 to 6 picogram per milliliter. In the proven sepsis group, there was a significantly increment in concentration of interleukin-6 48 hours after onset of clinical sepsis. The value could summit to over 10,000 picogram per milliliter. In a retrospective multicenter study of death and discharge with a laboratory confirmed infection of SARS-CoV-2 patients died of COVID-19 had higher levels of interleutin-6 suggest that in COVID-19 mortality might be due to the virus-activated cytokine storm syndromes. The patients with uh, severe pneumonia showed an increase in interleukin-6, and the level of interleukin-6 was associated with uh, the extent of uh, pulmonary inflammation. It has been suggested that the increase of interleukin-6 is uh, caused by severe pneumonia and uh, the immune reaction in the lung. Here we can see interleukin-6 is one of the major cytokines in the tumor microenvironment. It's an important fa factor which is found at a high concentration and known to be deregulated in cancer. Elevated levels of interleukin-6 are always associated with aggressive tumor growth and the response to the therapeutics. In fact, in many types of cancer. High level of, high serum level of interleukin-6 is associated with a high degree of tumor progression and a systemic weakness. In breast cancer, systemic interleukin-6 is correlated with poor prognosis, advances, advanced disease and metastasis. In contrast, um, paracrine and uh, autocrine of interleukin-6 signaling plays a regulatory role in breast cancer tumors, controlling cancer cell growth, cancer stem cells renewal, and metastasis. A high level of circulating of interleukin-6 was associated with uh, inferior response and the survival outcomes in non-small non -small cell lung cancer patients treated with the chemotherapy. In concluding, interleukin-6 is an important biomarker for the infection, sepsis, COVID-19, and other immunoreligious diseases, even tumors which has a great value in diagnosis and the prognostic assessment and the monitoring in disease uh, treatment. If we combine both SCD14ST and uh, interleukin-6, we expect a better clinical outcome in future studies. At last, thank you very much for your attention, and we expect the future further cooperation with uh, Mandarin. Thank you very much. Our next presentation will be by Professor Romanelli on soluble CD14 subtype clinical application in PGI and other special scenarios. Professor Romanelli is from Italy 
Uh, he's full professor of clinical pathology in, at the University of Milan, director of the Laboratory of Clinical Pathology uh, at the Department of Health Sciences, Diagnosis and Treatment and Laboratory Medicine uh, Department in Policlinico San Donato uh, in Milan, Italy. Professor Romanelli, please go ahead. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Professor Corsi Romanelli from University of Milan, Italy, and uh, I talk about uh, the role of perception and new generation inflammatory biomarkers in PJI and also in other infections such as uh, SARS CoV 2. But, um, um, the uh, use of biomarkers in infection diagnosis is very important, and uh, everybody wants to find an ideal biomarker for a readily quantifiable in an accessible biological fluid or clinical sample uh, for quick and consistent and also economical and show to correlate with an interested outcome progression. And also expression is significantly increased, especially in related disease condition. And uh, uh, an ideal biomarker should identify the presence of absence of infection, aid in risk stratification and monitor the response to intervention. The say to measure an ideal biomarker should be rapid, reliable, and reproducible in different settings applied to a sample obtained easily. So this is what we want to uh, have in the laboratory medicine. And perception is uh, one of these new uh, biomarkers. And uh, perception elevation is caused by bacterial phagocytosis. Uh, this is uh, one uh, of several uh, papers uh, come out uh, in uh, PubMed. And you can see in journal infection and chemotherapy, the phagocytosis by human monocyte is required for the secretion of perception. Is a paper of 2015. And you see what's happened. This is phagocytosis, this is phagolysosome and lysosome and CD14 that is, uh, became perception because the perception is the name of the soluble CD14. And uh, perception go out of the cell, okay, is digested uh, with catepsin D and uh, come out from uh, from phagosome and uh, it go in, into the into, into the bloodstream. So this is what's happen uh, and normally in, at the cellular level. And uh, perception is a marker of sepsis and infection. We see several. Uh, we, I only put uh, the much uh, the milestone on this of this uh, 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 new biomarker. You can see several several uh, uh, paper uh, uh, come out uh, in 2018 and uh, 2014. So the, this uh, this uh, biomarker is a new biomarker, and uh, you also see that. Uh, Many of these uh, 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 journals are of the uh, ICU uh, units, so the, uh, emergency medicine and, criti and critical care, because uh, the infection and sepsis is uh, also uh, related to uh, uh, intensive care unit in the hospital and the laboratory medicine, the department of pathology laboratory medicine, like uh, my department of uh, pathology laboratory medicine, is a uh, uh, is a uh, in charge to uh, to uh, uh, evaluate the uh, uh, perception uh, for uh, uh, the uh, patient stay in ICU uh, uh, department. This uh, uh, is uh, the clinical performance uh, in sears and sepsis. Okay, and you can see perception is the orange, and you see IL six and the PCT and CRP uh, IL six in blue and uh, and. Uh, uh, light blue is PCT and violet is a CRP. This is the Apache score that uh, normally is used uh, in, uh, in ICU, and you can see that perception is uh, very important in this uh, score. And uh, also, if you see perception in picogram ML, in a normal, in serious, in local infection, in sepsis, and in severe, in severe sepsis, you can see that there is, it is a trend to increase of perception in this type of patient. This is a rock curve that uh, uh, can explain the uh, sensitivity and specificity of uh, the four uh, uh, biomarkers much more used in, uh, in, uh, in study. Uh, the sepsi is a perception, okay, PCT, IL-6, and CRP. And uh, the important thing is that uh, perception, uh, that the normal is a, in, the normal is a, a picogram and a, a ML, uh, less than 200 is the exclusion of sepsis. 
less than three hundred is systemic infection, not probable. Less than five hundred is systemic infection, possible. Less than one thousand is significant risk of a systemic infection, and much more than one thousand is high risk of a systemic infection. And in in, a, in the SOFA score is a much more uh, than eight or equal eight. So. Uh, this is uh, what we know right now on perception. Perception is also very important, not also uh, for sepsis, but for different uh, type of infection. So we can see sepsis intensive care uh, at all, but perception and kidney disease, perception and neonatal infection, perception in autoimmune disease, perception in orthopedic infection, in cardiovascular disease, in pulmonary infection, in fungi infection. So. You see many, many papers that they put in this slide that can, uh, 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 that can figure out how many uh, rural have a perception in uh, the infection in several, uh, several uh, fields of uh, medicine. For uh, PJI, we study, in my group study uh, PJI uh, in the last uh, period, uh, in particular, Professor uh, uh, Emanuele Galliera, it is associate professor in, 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 uh, on my chair. And uh, uh, prosthetic infection is the most common cause of failure of total joint arthroplasty requiring revision surgery. And uh, the incidence depends on the joint pr prosthesis involvement. And normally, if there is a 1.7, 3.2% knee replacement and 2.5, knee replacement. So it is extremely important to identify PJI as early as possible in order to promptly start antibiotic treatment and in the worst case, plan surgical revision and prophylaxis. So it is bacteria, this is the normal, and this is the septic, you know. So this is, a, 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 and you can see, and you can see that the, the limits of prosthetic joint infection diagnosis is that this diagnosis is difficult because, uh, because, uh, because uh, currently is based on clinical presentation, microbiological tests, histopathology, imaging, but this is an invasive test and false negative to microbial culture tests should happen. Also, we have inflammatory markers like procalcitonin, PCT, CRP, C-reactive protein, IL-6, but IL-6, this is our, uh, is an our paper, uh, come out in 2011, IL-6 and CRP are useful in the diagnosis of PJI, while procalcitonin and not a great diagnostic value in PJI. This is on International Journal of Monopathology and Pharmacology in 2011. In order to optimize the diagnostic process, infection biomarker with fast response and high sensitivity and specificity for infection are needed and so this is, uh, this is uh, the, uh, the, the article that uh, is another article on uh, International Journal of Pharmacology, Immunopathology and Pharmacology, 3.298. Impact Factor is uh, a paper of my group with Professor Galliera that uh, is entitled uh, Perception a Potential Biomarker of PJI, a comparative analysis with known and, and new infection biomarker. This is the perception in the patient and in not infected, and perception results significant in PJI patient compared to not infected control. This is the, uh, the uh, it, this is a relation uh, with a good R2 from between CRP and perception and between IL6 and perception. And uh, 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 currently used by markers in prosthetic joint infection diagnosis and perception. And we have we have make a comparison between uh, 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 CRP and, and the IL-6 and then perception is a greater diagnostic value than CRP and IL-6 in the diagnosis of PJI. It can be considered a better diagnostic marker that could be introduced in the clinic for protection of PJI. This is the perception rock and you can see that is a really a greater diagnostic value because uh, we have a, a different uh, a rock uh, value between uh, 0 0.75 and 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 to 6. So, uh, uh, this is uh, 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 another, uh, this is uh, from this uh, paper that uh, we published in, uh, in 2018. So, uh, another thing is uh, that in PJI, we, we can see several times uh, and we can, uh, and perception could be introduced in the routine follow up after the first prosthetic surgery. So, also for prognosis, in order to early detect any possible prosthetic infection. This would allow a prompt therapeutic antibiotic intervention in order to avoid the revision surgery. And 
it can be decreased at early time points and a long following time points and comparable to not infected patient at a later times point the not infected is the gray the light gray and the pgi is the brown gray okay so uh, biomarkers combination infection diagnosis is very important this is a uh, uh, it's not uh, an hour paper, it's a paper of a group of GLARA and collaborated in clinical orthopedics and related to the research in 2013, five years before our first paper. And you can see that the way they put together CRP plus IL-6, CRP plus procalcitonin, CRP and leukocyte, IL-6 and procalcitonin, IL-6 and leukocyte, procalcitonin and leukocyte. Uh, uh, we make another thing. We make a longitudinal evaluation with new, with the combination of new generation biomarkers in PJI, so we can put super. We have a good experience in several papers on super. We put the toll receptor two. We have a several paper on the toll receptor uh, and uh, and the CCL two and uh, osteopontin CD one six three prem one MP MMP nine is a metalloproteases and IL six. So what we can see. Uh, if we look at the uh, rock curves of uh, this uh, new generation biomarker, we see that, that, uh, that the super CCL2, uh, all of these are very high, but, but, but uh, in, uh, in the mini review that came out in 2019 on CCLM, is uh, 8.49 impact factor, is uh, our group, uh, uh, is a clinical application of perception as diagnostic biomarker infection is an overview, an update, we put uh, all of these things. The take-home message for us is that perception can be useful in PJI diagnosis and prognosis, can support by a panel of new inflammatory markers involved in monocyte macrophage mediated inflammatory infection. What's next? Can perception be useful in SARS-CoV-2 infection? Yes. This is a new paper that came out and I show the data. It's a recent paper made uh, uh, together uh, uh, with uh, uh, R&D of, uh, uh, of uh, Mendray and SARS-CoV-2 clinical manifestation. We know very well uh, that uh, the COVID-2019 symptoms is, a, is a, 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 a several symptoms. It's a common symptoms and possible complication. But uh, we know very well that also there are uh, inside the cell in the, uh, the clinical manifestation is uh, is uh, is, uh, is the phenotype of a, 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 a several pathological condition that you can see in these slides inside the cell this is a ACE2 receptor and inside the cell there is a translational and uh, transcription and replication and this is uh, what's happened but 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 we have also to look at the stage of the infection the clinical stage the stage one is the early infection with viral replication known to mild symptoms the stage two pulmonary phase pulmonary involvement dyspnea hypoxemia and the hyperinflammation phase of stage three with ARDS, organ failure, critical illness. And uh, this is much more in obese. We know, uh, we, uh, we, I don't put uh, our paper, but there is uh, our paper with my last name in uh, obesity, come out in 2022 in, uh, in, uh, in the spring, and is, uh, and is uh, a paper that uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, important because uh, we demonstrate uh, a different, uh, uh, a different uh, inflammatory response uh, between normal weight and obese patient. This is very important also because uh, for American people, you know, uh, obesity is a, a, is a, 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 a several condition for American people. And uh, we publish on obesity that is uh, the Journal of American Society of Obesity. And, uh, and we are very happy because we are the first to make this uh, 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 hypothesis and we have a lot of uh, of a, a citation for this paper come out uh, in this year. So this is what's happened. And uh, you see uh, uh, in, this, uh, in, uh, in this slide that uh, we can make vaccine, we can make, anti we can give anti-inflammatory, we have anti antiviral agents. And uh, the important thing is that uh, we have the ICU management with this potential treatment, the pathology is inflammation and thrombosis as well. And uh, the stage one is a viral response. Uh, this is the stage two is uh, uh, the pulmonary phase. And the stage three is, I, we, uh, uh, I told you, is uh, uh, the hyperinflammation phase with also response. In the first phase, uh, we have uh, 
lymphocytopenia and thrombocytopenia with uh, a, 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 a trend to increase over PT, CRP, DDMR, LDH. And the second stage is uh, the uh, elevation of uh, CRP and uh, transaminase, and also cytokine storm in the, in the stage three with uh, PCT, LDH, CRP, DDMR, ferritin, uh, uh, troponin C, BNP, and tpro BNP, and creatinine. And this is uh, that, uh, the cytokine storm, you know, the outcome in the multi organ failure and death of patient. And this is because uh, COVID 19 is a, is, is, is a, is a, is a, 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 a viral infection that, uh, uh, um, that um, uh, trusts inflammatory signals uh, to uh, uh, several types of cells, like dendritic cell, monocyte, and macrophage that uh, start the cytokine cyto cyto storm. This is, uh, uh, this is from Frontiers Immunology in 2020, uh, when, uh, uh, when COVID uh, uh, arrived, uh, also in Europe, and uh, this is a fantastic uh, uh, um, uh, paper. And when you, uh, when you come out of the storm, you, uh, you won't be the same person who walked in. is a, 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 um, a paper on Frontiers in Immunology uh, of uh, two years ago. Uh, and uh, what's happened in inflammatory response? That the man monocyte and macrophage are uh, involved in the production of pro inflammatory cytokine and chemokine and local inflammatory response and systemic cytokine storm. And also, uh, they bring to multi, multiple organ failure and death. But bacteria, bacteria come inside the, 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 the cell, there is phagocytosis, and monocyte produce a macrophage IL6, but uh, Perception is also produced during uh, SARS-CoV-2. And perception by micro COVID-19 disease, uh, yes, there are several uh, evidence. And the first evidence was in 2021, in 2000, uh, and 2020 also. This is a several, this is a, 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 a interesting uh, paper from uh, Professor Plemani, that is uh, another speaker on, on this. Uh, 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 a special day for mind right is the perception in risk certification of patient and this is uh, come out in clinical chemical act in 2020 and there is also several uh, uh, also another italian group with vito procacci on uh, acta biomedica and this is only few paper but uh, only to see to show you what's happened and the perception in the prediction of covid-19 outcome in icu patient this is a study design that we make on a COVID positive uh, 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 ICU patient, we uh, study uh, a different a different time uh, perception super uh, solubile uh, uh, rage is a receptor of advanced indicated end products and I six I ten and CRP and we say and we and we want to study this patient to see also the uh, anthropometric uh, uh, evaluation of this population. And uh, we use MADRA in CL uh, 1200 uh, chemical elimination immunosensory system. It is in our university laboratory. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, we, uh, we published this paper uh, this year on uh, biomolecules, is uh, in part factor 6.064. And uh, we published with Lina Yu and, and, and Dr. He from the RD of uh, MADRA. And uh, with Marco Ramucci, that is uh, uh, the uh, director of the department of uh, ICU in my hospital, in which uh, I am director of the department of pathology and laboratory medicine. Uh, and uh, what's happened? It's, uh, uh, this is uh, what, uh, what our result in the paper. Perception is higher at T0 and progressive, increase in patient will eventually die, is a stable level in discharge in patient, and this is confirmed by good rock. Curve the potential value of prognostic biomarker for COVID-19 outcome in ICU patient. We see also CRP and CRP eigen in patients who eventually die compared to this once, remain stable either all over the time until the lethal outcome is a good diagnostic power at zero, as indicated by a rock, rock curve, is a 0.866, not able alone to predict the worsening of the disease. And this is a an explanation, inflammatory cytokine is additional biomarker because uninfected individual, individual uh, no symptoms 
and uh, uh, in the circulation we see CD4 positive and CD8 positive. But uh, with moderate COVID-19, uh, we start to see IL-10 and IL-6 and TNF alpha because they are produced by macrophages and the interferon uh, gamma expression CD4 positive T cell. And in several COVID-19, we see the cytokine level, the cytokine storm, because the macrophage produce a lot of the cytokine and we see IL-6 very high and we see a low lymphocyte CD4 T cell and CD8, a low interferon gamma expressing CD4 T cell and, and also natural killer cells and, and the elevation on white. Uh, 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 blood cell. We, 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 this is what's happened normally, and this is the reason because uh, uh, we have also to look uh, uh, to cytokine, but uh, this is another argument that uh, Professor Polimani should explain very well. Uh, and the prediction of COVID-19 outcome in patient, in ICU patient, I see, we only see uh, this is a, a, a review, cytokine growth factor review in 2020, when it uh, appeared the IL-6 relevance for immunopathology of SARS-CoV-2. And in this uh, paper, this is a, 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 a picture of this paper. You can see uh, what's, what, what IL-6, IL-6 can do, uh, uh, like uh, promoting and also uh, to inhibit, you know, uh, several uh, uh, cytokine and, uh, and uh, 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 like... Uh, uh, IL-1, TNF-alpha, IL-12, and also in terms of beta-1. And this is a, 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 the reason because IL-6 has been recently described as COVID-19 severity predictor. And uh, we use uh, also for, uh, uh, the, uh, for, uh, for uh, follow uh, the uh, prognosis of uh, the patient. And this is what's happening in our patient and is, uh, with a very significant IGAM level at zero. And GABA increased along the time point, statistical significance only a distant time point, confirmed the good diagnostic power, weak longitudinal evaluation prediction. And uh, uh, the, the prediction of uh, outcome uh, uh, patient with IL-10 IL and other cytokine, very important, is uh, come out from two papers, one from 2020 and the other one from uh, 2021 and uh, is linked with uh, IL-6, obviously, and uh, this is elevated peripheral inflammatory cytokine like IL-18, IL IL-2 receptor antagonist, uh, and TNF-alpha, IL-7, IL-4, and, uh, and uh, IL-10 is, uh, 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 is uh, the cytokine that start all of this uh, uh, response, and uh, you can see cytokine, also receptor, okay, this one, okay, and then this is, 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 is from a trends in immunology, uh, and is a picture very, very, uh, uh, very uh, academic because uh, is uh, is uh, explained very well what's happened during uh, the uh, cytokine storm and the role of uh, IL IL10. So IL10 is very important also for. Uh, IL-18, but also for team uh, free. Uh, IL-10 in our patient is significantly higher, okay, but the display situation rather a gradual increase over time. So the good diagnostic value at zero as confirmed by the, uh, the rock curve, but a weak prognostic value in predicting mortality risk. So uh, start uh, at the beginning, but it's not uh, a, 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 a weak pronostic value. And we need also not only diagnostic, but also pronostic uh, 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 biomarker. Uh, the other things is super, super. For us, super is not a new, uh, a new uh, uh, biomarker because we study and we publish on super uh, time ago. Is uh, the acronym of the soluble rookinase plasminogen activation receptor and uh, is uh, 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 come out from uh, UPAR, that is, uh, uh, that is uh, a GPA, a, a anchor cleavage, okay, on the cell membrane. This is from Nature Review in Molecular Cell Biology. Is the urokinase type plasminogen activator receptor. UPAR is a glycoprotein released during inflammation and infection, and UPAR promotes the migration and adhesion of leukocyte. And the solubular form, the SUPAR, okay, is obtained by proteolytic cleavage of UPAR from the cell surface. What's happened? Uh, super in the serum uh, in healthy people is very low. In infection and in acute disease is intermediate, and in the sepsis is very high. 
And this is the reason because we want to see super in our patient and uh, we, uh, uh, we see uh, uh, super in a, in a, in a, this is a, uh, in another paper, okay, uh, in which uh, uh, there is a low super, okay, less than uh, six nanogram ml, uh, and elevated super much more than six nanogram ml. And uh, this is a, a paper on uh, the role of super system from uh, the Italian group on Vincenzo Pavone. And uh, uh, this is a, a picture of a paper, and you can see COVID patient, asymptomatic carrier, and health control. And what's happening in our patient? An increasing higher amount in patient who eventually die compared to the ones who recover. This difference was not evident at time of admission in ICU here, uh, but emerged over time. And uh, is a prognostic rather than a diagnostic marker, but we know already this from other paper that we published times ago at the moment of admission in ICU. It could be more useful at longer time point to predict the outcome of a COVID-19 disease. Uh, last but not least, uh, the uh, rage, uh, the receptor rage, age is inflammatory detrimental effects, and the SRA is the core receptor and is a general protective role. This is an age in aging, inflammation, vasculopathy, metabolic disorder, coagulopathy, obesity, and COVID-19 death. There are many of these pathologies, so age and rage is, a, is a linked to, to COVID-19. Also, this is a, an hour paper, come out on Journal of Clinical Medicine, uh, and is a 3.6 impact factor is uh, by, uh, by my associate professor Elena Dozio and, uh, and uh, other people, and also Marco Ranucci is uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the head of uh, ICU department in my hospital. And this is another paper in monopharmacology uh, in 2021. Uh, this came out in 2020. This in 2021 is advanced application and products and it's a receptor age, modulate age, dependent covenant morbidity and mortality. Our, our title is a super receptor for advanced education and products, and it's forms in COVID-19 patients with uh, and without diabetes mellitus, because uh, you know that the people with diabetes mellitus are much more uh, 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 linked to uh, COVID-19, a pilot study on their own and disease biomarker. Why it's formed? Because uh, 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 S-Rage is also in several forms like E-Rage and C-Rage. Uh, SRH in our patient, uh, uh, we also try uh, uh, in, in this paper uh, to, uh, to, uh, to analyze SRH and initial significantly higher level in patients who eventually die compared to ones who recover, confirming the higher inflammatory response in this subject. At following time point, SRH saw a, 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 a progressive significant decrease. Uh, therefore, reducing is a, a protective rule uh, until the last time point before death, a complete loss of its protective rule against organ damage. So, the craze of X ray from high level over time will be considered a good prognostic marker predicting the risk of mortality. And uh, if you put all together this uh, IL6 super CRP L10 S range, there is a very good correlation with IL6 super and CRP. By, 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 by perception, a good correlation with uh, IL-10 and SRH. Uh, conclusion. The clinical evolu evolution of COVID-19 is still poorly understood, and one of the main challenging COVID-19 diseases is the prediction of mortality, in particular in hospitalized patients. In addition to the current clinical parameter used in patient monitoring, more risk prediction and prognostic factors are needed in order to improve treatment programs for infected patients, ICU main risk of lethal outcome. An ideal biomarker of infection should be not only reliable, sensitive, and specific, but it should also be easy and fast in providing a response to a clinical question. The advantage of perception is that it can be measure, measured by a laboratory analytical instrument very quickly, less than two hours, uh, and thus providing fast response to ICU clinician who can identify COVID-19 patients with high risk of mortality and adjust the treatment strategy at an early stage. Perception showed a potential value as prognostic biomarker for COVID-19 outcome and mortality risk in an ICU COVID patient. A panel of biomarking combination rather than a single one is more powerful, powerful in defining the clinical condition. So perception 
in addition to new generation inflammatory biomarkers such as super, SRH, and the cytokine, IL-6 and IL-10, can be a useful prognostic tool to be associated to canonical inflammatory parameters such as CRP to predict SARS-CoV-2 outcome in ICU patients. I acknowledge my knowledge is of two man right for uh, the help in this study on uh, perception and, uh, and uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 to all the group of university, uh, to the group of uh, uh, my hospital, San Donato IRCC Polyclinic in Milano, and uh, to the group of Galeazzi IRCC Orthopedic uh, Institute in Milano, and uh, all the people that uh, help us in uh, uh, PJI uh, uh, infection and uh, to the uh, San Donato Polyclinic IRCC yes, for uh, ICU department and uh, Marco Ranucci for, uh, for uh, uh, the uh, COVID patient. Thanks for your attention. Our next presentation will be given by Dr. Zhang Yi on Mendray inflammation panel and its performance. Dr. Yi is the manager of immunoassay reagent uh, at R&D department in Minre. Dr. Yi, please go ahead. Hello, everyone. This is Yi Zhang from Minre. The inflammation panel is one of the most important panels in Minre's chemiluminescence immunoassay portfolio and constant efforts have been made to keep providing the best products to meet different demands of our end users. It is my great honor to have this topic, Mindury Chemiluminescence Immunoassay Technology and Artistry, and I would share the recent progress of our latest inflammation products and relevant research results. Infection is common in people of all ages around the world. However, the signs of infection are not always noticeable, and differentiating them accurately is still a challenge. Without correct diagnosis, inappropriate treatment could be made to influence patient safety. The infection might develop into sepsis even induce death without correct treatment. Therefore, how to correctly and timely diagnose and monitor infection is very important. During infection and inflammation management, different clinical scenarios and stages have different requirements. According to the different physiopathological processes of infection, Many biomarkers have been reported, studied, and widely used. We hope that all the biomarkers have high sensitivity and specificity, which could monitor treatment results and a set prognosis outcome. However, the current inflammation biomarkers have some drawbacks. For example, um, blood culture, the gold standard of infection detection, usually takes long culture time and could easily be affected by contaminations and other factors. So it's not easy to obtain true positive or true negative results by blood culture. Procalcitonin, PCT, an excellent inflammation biomarker in the past decades also suffers from some limitations. PCT is more sensitive to gram-negative bacterial infection, and it does not increase significantly in local infections. Meanwhile, PCT could non-specifically rise in trauma and surgery. Also, prognostic value of PCT is insufficient. Interleukin-6, IL-6 is an early stage biomarker for inflammation. It is very sensitive, but the disease specificity of IL-6 needs to be improved. To address the rising burden of inflammation in hospitals and fulfill the needs in different scenarios, 
Mindery has developed the SCD14 ST assay, which works with PCT and IL6 as the IPS inflammation panel. SCD14 ST, the soluble subtype of CD14 protein, is a glycoprotein fragment uh, derived from monocytes and macrophages. It is a biomarker indicating the activation of innate immune cells responded to invading pathogens, which is different yet complementary to IL-6 and PCT. To be more specific, CD14 is a, a glycoprotein expressed on the surface of various immune cells, including monocytes, macrophages, neutrophils, etc. During the bacterial infection, CD14 binds to LPS-LBP complex and activates the tor like receptor 4, TLR4, which further initiates the immune response to infectious pathogens uh, through intracellular signal transduction. During this process, as CD14 is cleaved by cathepsin D and other proteases, and this cleavage releases the N-terminal fragment of CD14 with 13K Dalton, which constitutes the SCD14 subtype, that is SCD14 ST, compared to PCT induced by cytokines after bacterial phagocytosis. SCD14 ST is a direct biomarker after the invasion of bacteria, which is mediated by pathogens and is produced in early stages. SCD14 ST has good uh, diagnostic and prognostic value making it a good compensate to those traditional inflammation biomarkers. SCD14 ST exhibits high diagnostic performance in various clinical scenarios, such as neonatal sepsis, prosthetic joint infection, febrile neutropenia infection, bacteria sepsis, and early infection in trauma. Mindery inflammation panel includes three parameters, IL-6, PCT, and SCD14 SD, which we termed as IPS. All three parameters are developed based on the sandwich immunoassay method, and the total turnaround time, TAT, are all 18 minutes. Based on Mindery's superior CLIA platform, the IPS products were all well designed and comprehensively evaluated. All three assays have high sensitivity, wide linearity range, great precision, and anti uh, interference ability. To be more specific, some key analytical performances of the IPS products were shown later. For SCD14 ST, two samples with traceable and defined value were tested to verify the accuracy of the assay. Relative deviation was within plus or minus 10%. The testing results of Mindery SCD14 ST assay are not interfered with the potential endogenous substances, analogs, and drugs up to the concentrations shown in the table. For PCT, the linearity, precision, and carrying over rate were listed here. The total precision were 3.05% and 1.81% for level one and level two serum sample respectively. For IL-6, the linearity, precision, accuracy, and endogenous interference were listed here. The total proceedings were 1.8%, 2%, 1.73%, and 1.67% 1 
for samples at those four different concentrations, respectively. The thresholds for these assays were also established. For SCD14 ST, results below 200 peak per meal are unlikely to be bacteria infection. Results between 200 and 500 peak per meal would be potential bacteria infection. Results above 500 peak per meal would be highly related to bacteria infection. Well, for IL-6, the 95% CI for healthy individuals is 7 peak per meal. For PCT, results below 0.05 nanogram per meal are values for healthy individuals. Results between 0.05 nanogram per meal and 0.5 nanogram per meal could be possible bacteria infection. And results above 0.5 nanogram per meal could be high potential of bacterial infection. Then, a clinical researches were carried out to establish the outcome of the IPS panel under different clinical scenarios. Firstly, the diagnosis performance of the IPS panel were evaluated. SCD14 ST levels were significantly higher in patients with sepsis and septic shock than in healthy and infected groups. The ROC analysis showed that SCD14 ST was similar to PCT in the diagnosis of sepsis and had higher diagnostic performance than CRP. The multi-parameter model combined SCD14 ST with PCT and IL-6 had a better diagnostic ability for sepsis. This study confirmed that the diagnostic value of SCD14 ST in sepsis and a multi-parameter model based on SCD14 ST can help to make more accurate clinical decision. As an example in this study, a 34-year-old male patient was admitted to the hospital mainly due to abdominal pain lasting for one week. This patient was presenting acute pancreatitis with multiple organ dysfunction and had sepsis. His PCT increased slightly, which combined with SCD14 ST could further improve the diagnostic accuracy. And then after therapy, both SCD14 ST and PCT levels decreased along with his recovery. To evaluate the diagnosis performance of bacterial infection, the levels of FCD14 ST, PCT, and IL6 were tested in healthy, non bacteria infection, bacterial infection populations. SCD14 ST, IL6, and PCT can significantly distinguish healthy people non-infected patients and infected patients. For bacteria infection diagnosis, ROC analysis showed that the efficacy of SCD14 ST was close to that of PCT and higher than that of IL-6. The AOC of IPS combo testing is 0.852. The performance of IPS panel during the treatment of sepsis was also studied from November the 1st, uh, 2020 to October the 20th, 2021. And a total of 102 subjects were enrolled and the collection of follow-up data was completed in 89 subjects. For seven days treatment, SCD14 ST levels in the uh, improved group showed a decreasing trend 
And in non-improved group, the SCD14 showed an increasing trend, while the PCT, IL6, and CRP were all decreased in both improved group and non-improved group. For 28 days survival state, only SCD14ST has significant differences in the survival group and the death group. SCD14ST levels were not significantly different in the first five days, six days, and seven days, suggesting that SCD14ST could be predicted in advance to five days. In the 28 days survival group, the plasma SCD14ST level gradually decreased with time. But in the death group, the plasma SCD14ST level increased with time. While the trend of PCT, CRP, and IL6 were not significantly different in those different groups. Lastly, as an example of the prognosis study, the infection biomarkers in the prediction of COVID-19 outcome were also evaluated, as mentioned by Professor Kosi. The changes of biomarkers in the recovery group and the death group were monitored to study the relationship between the concentration level and trend of biomarkers. The prognosis of COVID-19 combined with bacterial infection were also studied. The levels of SCD14ST, IL6, and CRP in the death group were higher than those in the survival group. And for the death group, the levels of these biomarkers were continuously rising before the patient's death. And then, in summary, the MindRace inflammation panel and products were all well designed and developed to provide a comprehensive solution for different clinical scenarios. With excellent analytical performance and continuous clinical research, we will continue to support different clinical needs to improve product quality and to explore the academic frontier. That's all for today. Thanks very much for your listening. Thank you all. I would like to thank all of our speakers for their excellent presentations. Now we will have a closing speech by Mr. Denny Yang at Monray. Mr. Yang is the Director of International IVD Marketing at Monray. Mr. Yang, please go ahead. Dear Professor Kosro, Professor Plebani, Professor Shelfi, Professor Kosi, Dr. Dang Yi, dear users and potential users, ladies and gentlemen, greeting from Shenzhen, Murray Head Office. This is Danny, Director of uh, International IBD Marketing. Today, we are so honored to invite so many professors across the world to update us how PCT interleukin-6 and SCD14-ST are applied and how helpful they are in clinical practices. To better meet the needs of our customers, Myra has now incorporated IL-6, PCT, and SCD14-ST into the inflammation solution for clinical application and management. With this panel, we provide both high sensitivity and high specificity assays and value-added services for our end users. In the near future, we will develop more new products and solutions for more medical valuable assay for our end users. Thank you. Again, everyone, thanks to our speakers for their great presentations and thanks to our, all of our participants for attending today's webinar. I hope you benefited from a lot of the information provided by our excellent speakers on uh, new biomarkers of sepsis and uh, hope uh, to see you at future webinars. Thank you.